Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. I have been collecting ColecoVision games since 1982, and I've amassed an enormous collection of instruction manuals. And I want to show you guys these. I'm going to show you the first party manuals at first, but then we're going to get into some of the third party stuff, which gets really interesting. And there's some really strange manuals, some really rare ones. I want to show you guys these. And back in the 80s, I threw away all my ColecoVision boxes like an idiot because I needed space in my room. And, but I kept the manuals and cartridges. I mean, the games are the main thing, right? But also kept the manuals, which I'm really glad I did. And I want to show you guys these in this video today. There's some really interesting ones. And I kept my inserts, too. The little supplemental items that were with the manuals. I've got some of those to show you as well. So be sure and stay to the end of the video because that's when I break out the rare stuff to show to you guys and just some of the more oddball items. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, check it out. Crazy, insane instruction manual collection for my ColecoVision. All right, guys. Here we go. Let's check out my massive ColecoVision instruction manual. I'm just going to comment on some of the games and show you inside of some of the manuals. Uh, Carnival, one of my favorite games for the console. A great target shooter. Near identical to the Sega arcade game. Amazing. That's the original Donkey Kong manual that came with my ColecoVision back in 82. War Games is a really interesting movie tie-in. Of course, Zaxxon had some of the better graphics for the system. Love me some bump and jump. Mousetrap, I got that, uh, you know, when I got my ColecoVision for Christmas, I got Mousetrap and Donkey Kong. Venture I spent a ridiculous amount of time with back in the day. Now, Subrock, if you guys have never played Subrock with the Super X controllers, it works fantastic with that uh, controller. Really cool game. I love the patented light blue on the ColecoVision manuals. Very distinctly Coleco. They had very well laid out manuals. And um, I just thought they were classy. Very streamlined. Col colorful, not like literally colorful, but just kind of... Nice wording and good writing. And I love how at the end you would always have the fun of discovery because they just give you the basics in the game, they say, and, but play it to get all the ins and outs on the, you know, you're always going to find surprises and things you didn't, that wasn't necessarily in the manual. Tarzan, really original. Interesting original ColecoVision games. So many ColecoVision games are, as you guys know, are arcade ports. And Tarzan was an original game. Nice little drawing of the screenshot here. Kind of a beat-em-up set in the jungle. Early beat-em-up. Really great game. A little bit of adventure elements, too. Ladybug. My favorite game for the ColecoVision. Now, Mr. Do is my favorite game of all time on the arcades and Super Nintendo, but... Ladybug is such an amazing port for the ColecoVision of the arcade game that I just absolutely love it. See, just the ColecoVision manuals just really do a great job of getting you prepared to play the games. There's Mr. Do, love it. Frenzy, great. Sequel to Berserk, great port of the arcade game. Amazing, one of the best ColecoVision games. And some of the manuals just had the white, black and white. They didn't have the blue like most of them did. Now here's something interesting. I'm gonna show you guys some really interesting third party stuff in a little bit, but we're still working our way through the first party stuff. Super Action Baseball came with this Super Action Baseball score pad, which I never used. There you go. I can't remember if it actually came packaged with the game or if I got that, uh, I think it did. Because I belonged to the ClickOvision Club back in the day, but I think the score pad came packaged with the game. I don't think football came with a similar score pad, so you just had to use regular paper, I guess, if you're playing football. Pepper 2, one of my favorites. An amazing maze game that really found its audience at home. Slither is sort of like Centipede. It came packaged with the trackball controller. Love, love, love that game. Cabbage Patch Kids, Adventures in the Park. Now, don't write off this game. It's actually... Someone like Pitfall, if you've never played Cabbage Patch Adventures in the Park, you might be surprised to know that it's actually 
a platformer. You see her there? If I can learn how to open a manual. See her jumping on the platforms there? And she also swings on vines, like in Pitfall. Get to that page here. Destroy my manual in the process. See, there you go. Anna Lee swings on those vines. Really cool stuff. Great game, actually. And really an early example of a platformer. Now, check this out. Some ColecoVision manuals had supplements, like Telly Turtle. Came with this reference guide to Telly Turtle commands and make it easier for kids to play the game. Here's another manual for a kid's game. And 2010, the graphic adventure action game based on the film. It had supplemental as well, and see, you got a little seal because they they want you to play the game, and you know, and if you get to the point where you need to know more about it or you get stuck or whatever, here you go. You can open this because it's confidential, only with clearance green, and you get some more information and whatnot about the game. This folds out. Pretty cool. Illusions, very unusual maze game for the ColecoVision. One of the few maze games I don't enjoy because it's really obtuse and kind of has an Escher design to the graphics. And it's got supplemental, see, again with the seal, supplemental instructions, just some hints and stuff. All Glebes travel at the same speed, same direction, and on a predetermined path. So there you go. All right, let's get some, some third-party manuals. The Parker Brothers ones had a kind of a very distinctive look with the black and green. Frogger 2 3D, really interesting sequel to Frogger. Much more obscure than Frogger, of course. Super Cobra played a lot. Tutankham, man, I love that game. Great maze shooter. Spent a ton of time with Popeye until I got the NES version. So we'll look inside a Parker Brothers manual real quick. Pretty text heavy so far, but yeah, there's some drawing of the screenshot there. There you go, and Mr. Dew's Castle, wow, Parker Brothers, see that's quite a bit different manual than that one, and it's for the 5200 and ColecoVision, covers both, saves them some costs on design and everything. Let's go down to the... Atari Soft games for the ColecoVision. I got a few of those. And what's interesting about this is like this Defender manual. They made a mistake in the manual, so they had to make, instead of reprinting an entire batch of manuals, they added this card. Make those changes. Galaxian, a much harder find a game, uh, game to find than Centipede or Defender, but all three games are awesome. Gateway to Apshay, or Apshai, one of my favorite adventure games from back in the day. Love that one. Oil as well, amazing maze title. It's really interesting manual how it sort of just a little fold out like that. Pretty cool. The brown's not the most attractive, but pretty neat manual. Jungle Hunt. Again, from Atari, Atari Soft, quite a bit different than their other manuals. Fantastic port. And you got some Imagic, Moonsweeper, Fathom, and Wing War. Of these three, I probably spent the most time with Fathom, but played a lot of Moonsweeper as well. And check out that color. Gorgeous. Remember this game having really nice graphics and good gameplay as well. And the manual, really nice manual. Let's look at the Fathom one too. No pictures in that one. Interesting. And the black and white cover. Let's look at Wing War. The Magic had those uh, sculptures they would use when they would photograph for their manuals. Pretty cool. Uh-oh. What happened there? Some damage from back in the day. These are all... Most of these are original manuals I had back in the day. Now check this out for Tournament ten Tennis, published by Telegames. They definitely went the cheap route. Wow. Spectre videos, Flipper Slipper, an interesting, like kind of pinball slash breakout, kind of a cross between pinball and breakout. Really strange game. 
really bizarre, but a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time with that. Epic's put out some really quality games for ColecoVision. Pit Stop is a great racer. Jumpman Jr., man, it's hard, but it's a great climbing slash platform game. Not the prettiest manual in the world. No screenshots or anything, but phenomenal game, which is the main 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 thing. Chuck Norris was an early beat-em-up by Zonix. And it's actually a pretty fun game. Zonix is a little bit notorious for not having the greatest games like Tomark the Barbarian, but they had some good ones too. Good detail in the manual with a bunch of screenshots. Chuck Norris had a lot of different, uh, you know, screen. For a game this early, had a lot of different uh, screens, you know, different types of beat em up action. Really cool. Different paths you would take and everything. And uh, when Telegames published this motocross racer, this Zonix game, they uh, just used a photocopied. I got a brand new copy of this game back in the day, and it's photocopied manual. The Heist and Minor 2049er are two of the most elaborate games for the ColecoVision, and they have two of the cheapest, lamest manuals. Just a flimsy, single piece of paper. At least that one has something on the back. Actually, this one opens up, so it's got four pages for Minor 2049er. So... But the heist is interesting. It's a fairly complex game, and you just have your one page there. Oh, actually, it does open up. Boy, it's been a long time since I looked at that. It fooled me because the back is blank. But, yeah, it does open up. That's good. I was thinking this is too complex of a game to not have more instructions than that. So that's a little better. Still pretty cheap, though. BC's Quest for Tires. Got that uh, Johnny Hart autograph on the cover. Johnny Hart artwork. I loved BC's Quest for Tires. So much fun. Pretty neat manual too. Did not care too much for BC's Quest for Tires to Grog's Revenge. Just wasn't nearly as much fun. It was kind of disappointing. I, I got this one later off eBay. BC's Quest for Tires, I got it brand new at the store back in the day, but I got, I got Grog's Revenge later when I was working on my first book so I could review it, and it just wasn't as good. Interphase puts out some good games, but some cheap manuals. Blockade Runner 3D, quality title. Sewer Sam is an interesting adventure game. And speaking of quality titles, but cheap manuals, these Activision ones aren't terrible. They're just narrow. But, um, you know, they get the job done. They tell you what you need to know. And, you know, you get the picture of the Activision team and everything. Adapted by the software. See, Activision didn't even develop this game. It was adapted by the Softworks. Interesting. And then you got Zenji, Decathlon, Pitfall 2. Man, awesome. As amazing as Pitfall was, Pitfall 2 is even better. Better graphics and deeper gameplay, really. Great stuff. Sir Lancelot is actually pretty good from Zonix. And it's only rock and roll, the strangest game I ever played. I did a video on this one about the weirdest game in my collection. And uh, here's it. This is interesting. So go down here to Fraction Fever. This is actually a pretty decent game. It's a math game, but it's pretty action-packed for a math game. You're jumping around, and it, it'll, it's pretty entertaining for a math game. Especially one with fractions. But there's this is just the manual in general. You know, it's by Spinnaker. They make computer games. But then there's this supplemental piece of paper with the ColecoVision, you know, packed in with a ColecoVision box. Just to give you specific instructions for the ColecoVision. River Raid, love it. Of course, that's the classic Atari 2600 game ported to the ColecoVision. And let's see what it says in here. It was adapted by the software Toolworks. Adapted for ColecoVision by Cindy Development Corp. But there's uh, Carol Shaw who designed the original game with her tips. Very cool. Love Activision. Just the quality of the games and the manuals are neat. Just a quality company. Great stuff. Now I got something really interesting over here for you guys. Some rarities like this. Anarch Adventure poster. 
that came with the game. It's just a you know blank back poster. This is really rare, and I just kept mine folded up in the box back in the day. Tragically, in the late 80s, I got rid of all my boxes for my ColecoVision games. I've been slowly, very slowly, uh, recollecting you know the boxed games. I don't have that many, maybe 15 or 20. But back in the 80s, I yeah, I probably had about 20 or so. But luckily, I kept the manuals and the inserts. But man, what a tragic mistake. I just wanted more space in my room. So like an idiot, I threw away the boxes. But anyway, at least I kept the cartridges and the manuals. And check out this Squish'em featuring Sam poster. How cool is that? And this is actually the instruction manual. It just folds out into a poster. Very informative. No screenshots, but gets the job done. I love Squish'em featuring Sam. It's a great climbing game. And uh, there's the Antarctic Adventure manual. And then just, uh, you know, the system manual, the peripheral manuals. I actually like the Super Action Controllers for certain games. Like, I don't play them with Mousetrap or Ladybug or Donkey Kong. But there's some that work great for, like Subrock. And, of course, you need it for games like Frontline. War Room. That was an interesting game. That was the first ColecoVision game I bought on sale. Uh, every Sunday, I would look through the sale ads in the newspaper and one day they had War Room for $23, marked down $7, because ColecoVision games were $30, most of them. Zaxxon and Minor 2049 were, third, were 50 but most other ColecoVision games were 30 and I remember seeing War Room in the newspaper for $23, and I rushed down to Sears and bought a copy, because, wow, $7 off, and I ended up enjoying this game quite a bit. Pretty cool. Nice manual, too. Probe 2000, very cool. They were supposed to do more games for ColecoVision before the crash. And then that comes with, uh, oh, that's for, yeah, that's with War Room. A little supplemental there. Very cool. Pretty hard to find card there. And then here's the Probe 2000 catalog. And that'll show you some games that didn't come out for it, like Pink Panther. Man, what could have been? And more tantalizingly, these two, Caverns and Creatures, Power Lords. Man, what could have been. Look how great those look. Of course, Pink Panther is just a drawing, and those are probably just mock-ups. But man, what could have been. But we got War Room. <laughs> and this video club sheet, this came when I was in the ClickVision video club. They sent the score sheet, and again, I didn't write in it. I figured I'd just write on regular paper and keep that. Even back then, I was thinking that way, although I didn't keep my boxes like an idiot. And the ClickVision catalog, and there's games in here that never really came out. Some have been homebrewed, but they didn't come out back in the day, like Sidetrack never came out back in the day. Spectar, although I do have the homebrew version of that. Ripcord wasn't published back in the day, but and these changed obviously. Man, look at those. They didn't come out. There was another skiing that came out later, but not like this. Horse racing. Man, what could have been? And everybody used to just dream tunnels and trolls. Gosh. We wanted that one so badly, but it just never came out. It looks so interesting. Chess Challenger didn't come out. Anyway, so there's the ColecoVision catalog. We're about to wrap up here. Supplemental instructions for the roller controller and the color tuning instructions. And last but not least, this is the manual for Keystone Capers. And it's this poster with a story. Pretty cool, huh? All right, guys, thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what is your favorite ColecoVision game. And of all these manuals you've seen today, did any in particular stick out? Do you have any favorites? And I do like the, just the original ColecoVision manuals with the light blue. They're cool. But, man, when you get here to the third-party stuff, get into some pretty funky designs like this one that I showed you guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for liking this video, and thank you for subscribing to the channel. We will talk to you later. If you're a fan of my work, you might want to consider supporting me on Patreon. 
For just a low fee each month, you get a lot of extra content. Another way to support the channel and my writing career is to buy books direct from me, including the 100 Greatest Console Video Games, the Classic Home Video Game Series, it's like an encyclopedia set, and this massive bad boy, the NES Omnibus Volume 1 A through L. I will put links in the description of this video where you can buy books direct from me and where you can support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it.